Is Interactive Brokers the best broker in 2021? I'll be sharing my thoughts. Cha-ching! What's up everyone, welcome back to another video with the Millennial Finance. Interactive Broker was actually the first foreign broker, actually the first broker that I used when buying American stocks. I did this back in around 2019. I really liked the platform, it was trusted, commissions were low, and the interface was rather simple to use. The only issue I had back then when I was using this broker was the $10 inactivity fee. This basically means that every single month, I had to generate a minimum of $10 in commissions, otherwise I would be charged that amount anyway. Back then, I was just starting out my investment journey. I didn't plan to buy and sell stocks very often, so I knew I wouldn't be spending this $10 in commissions. And also, my account was relatively small, so $10 was a lot to me to pay every single month. Not many brokers had this fee, a lot of them already stopped it, so at the time, I decided to stop using interactive brokers. Very recently though, they've made the change that they have removed the $10 inactivity fee. Nice. With this, I've actually deposited some of my money already back into interactive brokers, and I'll be making this video to go through some of the good and bad about using this platform. Let's start. First off, let me start with trustworthiness because this is one of the main questions we get whenever we review new brokers. They are one of the most staple brokers, especially for foreigners who are looking to invest in the US markets. The reason for this is yes, there are a lot of very established brokers in the US for them to buy their own local stocks, but for international for foreigners like us, there aren't that many very great choices where Interactive Brokers is now one of the most established ones. They're also a publicly listed company, they're listed on the NASDAQ, and they have a market cap of over $25 billion, which of course gives them some reputation. A fun fact about Interactive Brokers, which also gives them credibility, is that they're behind many brokers, including popular ones like Trading212, TradeStation, and Zextrade, where all three of these brokers and many more actually uses IB's execution capabilities. Also, they're regulated in many countries, including the big ones in the UK and US. Since they're regulated in the US, IB is also protected under SIPC, which means investors on the platform are protected up to $500,000 in the event anything happens to interactive brokers. This protection by the SIPC is not limited to US citizens only. I've done the checks, I've mentioned it in another video before. Foreigners can also get this account protection in the event that anything happens to these brokers. So overall, I'd say that IB is one of the most established brokers out there alongside TD Ameritrade and there isn't really much issue in us trusting them. One thing I want to inform upfront to my Malaysian viewers is that IB is not regulated by Securities Commission Malaysia. I have mentioned this before in other broker reviews that not all of these brokers find it necessary to get the approval from SC Malaysia when they've already gotten it from SC US and UK. Now that we've gotten this out of the way, let's get to the actual platform itself. So the first thing we'll be covering here is of course, user experience. You all know that I like talking about user experience whenever I talk about any app at all, and it's actually one of the most important things to me as an investor. They have a mobile app, and of course, they also have their own web version. They also have more advanced versions of this platform. It's downloadable to your computer. This is mainly more for traders or active investors. I haven't used it yet, but once I go into sort of the trading mode, they'll probably check it out. So straight up, going to the website version and the mobile app, I would say that the user friendliness is not on the level of brokers like Robinhood, Webull, and eToro. These three apps are well renowned for having very user friendly apps and it's also because of their target market, they're looking for millennials, people who are very used to you know, all these very intuitive apps. IB on the other hand, it's a bit more traditional in a way, but then again, so are most established brokers. I'm not saying that apps like Robinhood, eToro, Webull are not established, of course they are, but they all are founded at a much later date compared to these brokers. I still manage to navigate everything fine, I can do everything that I need, and they also have some pretty cool features that I will share in another video. Even using the mobile app, I can do everything that I need to, buy close positions, check my positions, and check whatever else that I need. Let's move on to the next part, which is the available assets that we can trade or invest in with IB. Being an established broker, they of course allow us to trade most products like stocks and ETFs, and for more advanced traders, options and futures. The good thing about IB as well is that they have a whole host of other markets apart from the US. This includes Europe, Singapore, and Hong Kong. 
This means that they cover every single stock listed on these exchanges, which is something that the newer apps like Webull and eToro don't. Another great thing about IB, which is something that I always bring up, is that they allow the purchase of fractional shares. A lot of people may say that if you can't afford buying a whole share, then maybe you shouldn't be investing at all, but I don't believe in this. Fractionals really help people who are just starting to invest and it removes a significant barrier of entry for many investors. Imagine someone who just started their job and wanting to buy shares of Shopify or Amazon. These stocks are pretty expensive or relatively expensive, so the option of fractional shares is great. On top of this, they also allow trading outside of regular hours, which is basically pre-market and after hours. While this isn't super important to me, I do like the feature and I have been using it from time to time. So you like what you're hearing, you can buy stocks from so many different countries, there's so many different asset classes, but what are the fees that IB charges us? So this is the part where IB is still slightly behind the other brokers that we reviewed before. They don't have zero commission trading. They still charge a fee for every single share that we buy. The amount that they charge varies by country and taking the most popular one, which is the US, they charge 0.005 per share or a minimum of $1 for every trade. This means that if you want to buy a share like Amazon, whether you get $50 worth or $100 worth, you'll still be charged $1 regardless, so it's better to buy in larger amounts. This fee, while not comparable to other brokers like even TD Ameritrade, is still acceptable to me. First of all, IB does have a lot of features that many other brokers don't. Something like TD Ameritrade, for example, they have everything there, but the thing they don't have is fractional shares. So IB has that, they charge a fee, but I've also been reading how these established brokers, they actually have better execution compared to the ones like Robinhood, Webull, eToro, which means that every time we buy a stock, we could potentially get it at a slightly lower price and whenever we sell, we could potentially get it at a slightly higher price. This is not confirmed of course, it depends on the stock, it depends on when you're buying, but I know personally myself as well that some of these brokers who kind of say that it's zero commission, they kind of make money from the spread and it's very difficult to get fills at good prices. So yeah, the fee is not very high, but it's also not zero. I think in my personal opinion that IB will move to zero commission trading in the near future, maybe a year or two, because they were one of the first brokers to go low commission before everyone else. And now that everyone has sort of moved to zero commission, I expect IB to do the same as well. Finally, let's talk about deposit methods. And this is very much more directed towards our Malaysian and Singaporean viewers. So immediately, the good thing is they do accept deposits in Singapore dollar with no fees at all, which is great. For Singaporeans, you can of course deposit however you like, there should be no fees. But for Malaysians, as mentioned before, you should sign up for a CIMB Singapore Fast Saver account so that you can transfer as well at no wire transfer fees. If you don't have or you don't want a CIMB Singapore account, then you can also just as easily transfer in Malaysian Ringgit but do take note that you will be charged a wire transfer fee by your bank and you will also pay their foreign exchange fees. So after you deposit in Singapore dollars, you can easily convert it to US dollars through the platform itself so that you can start buying and selling stocks in US dollars. Withdrawals are also relatively easy and quick to my memory. However, I can't remember exactly how long it takes because the last time I withdrew was two years ago when I decided to stop using the platform. My thoughts right now is that IB is a great broker for long-term investing due to their great features, reliability, and safeness. Now that they've removed the inactivity fee, long-term investing is much, much better using this broker. Previously, $10 a month, while maybe it's not that much, it's still something that's chipping away at your account every single month. The fees are still a bit of a downside compared to other brokers, but hopefully IB changes this in the near future. However, like I mentioned, I do value fractional shares and good execution, so I don't mind paying this fee for now. So I'm planning to use interactive brokers more for my long-term investments. I'm still going to use Webull for option trading and trading in general, but I'm going to explore IB and see how much better it is in terms of trading with their better execution and then decide from there. If you want to sign up for interactive brokers, use our link. We'll leave it in the description below. It'll really help the channel and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching till the end. Give us a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.